Welcome to Cha Cha's Kingdom. Today I want to show you this dish that just screams Taiwan. This is one of the top three dishes that represents true Taiwanese cuisine. You can find it on the street, in the night markets, in a fancy restaurant, or in Mama's kitchen. So if you've been to Taiwan but you've never tried this dish, you have failed. There are two things you can do: you can go back to Taiwan to visit, or you can learn it here with me. Most people just call this dish the Taiwanese meat sauce, but I seriously think this dish is so delicious and it represents Taiwan so well. It deserves for people to learn its proper Taiwanese name, which is lo ba. Easy enough, right? Repeat after me: lo ba. That's right. Most of the time, you'll find this dish that's made with ground pork, but the really good one it has to be made with the hand-cut pork belly. So, you know, in Cha Cha's Queendom, there's no way we're settling with the ground pork. We're definitely going that extra miles to achieve the best. So today, we're gonna cook it with the hand-cut pork belly. Before we get started, would you like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the little bells for notifications? Now, let me take you back to Taiwan. Here are the ingredients. We'll need some shallots, garlic, and also the fried shallots. You can buy it pre-made in an Asian supermarket, or you can make it your own. And ground white pepper, sugar, and of course the pork belly. We'll need soy sauce. We need some freshly ground black pepper. Taiwanese rice wine. Again, you can substitute with the Japanese dry sake or Shaoxing rice wine. Optional if you don't have it, no big deal. Most people like to braise some eggs with the loba sauce, and that's why I have the hard-boiled eggs here. But this is optional. And this, the pork bone. This is my pickle that I want to show you. Many people like to put five spices or Chinese herbs in this dish to flavor it. But my philosophy is that. It shows a chef's kung fu to use the minimum seasoning to achieve the best flavor. So follow me, and I'll show you how. For the pork bone, before we use it, we have to blanch it first. So just bring a pot of water to boil, and then we're gonna put the bones in, and then bring it back to boil, and let it simmer for about one minute or so, just to get rid of all the impurities. And then we're just gonna quickly rinse it. Next, we're gonna clean the pork belly. Even though they look there's nothing to clean, there's always something to clean. We're gonna use the knife to gently scrape the skin. Now see, there's always something to clean. Now you see this? You cannot unsee it. You always wanna clean your pork belly skin now. And then rinse it under water. Okay, now we're gonna cut the pork belly. It's cleaned. I know what you're thinking. Why do I need to clean the skin, right? Everything is in the detail. Because a lot of times you put in a lot of spices, it's because you want to cover up some unwanted flavor or taste in there. But if you wash everything clean, there will be no unwanted flavor in there. So you don't need that many spices to cover it up, right? So that is one thing. And then the second thing is. You probably thinking,、mm, maybe I'll just get the skinless pork belly. Then I don't need to clean the skin. Mm -mm, not for this dish because we're gonna need to cook this for three hours. Without the skin, nothing is protecting the fat. So ended up in three hours, you will have a pot of fat and not much meat left. So you really need the skin to keep them together, protect the fat from melting away. Now let's cut the pork belly. So the pork belly I get here in Seattle always have. This bone in there, so you want to take it off. And we're not getting rid of this bone. I am going to put this bone in the pot to give it flavor. Because remember, we also have the pork bone, so any extra bones is bonus. So I'm going to keep it. Now I'm going to sit the pork belly, the pork skin side down, because this way it sits. Really firmly on your cutting board. It's not gonna move around like this. You can tell it's more wobbly, right? So 
we're gonna do it like this. And I like to cut it in half first, so it's not super long, it's better for me to control. And then I'm gonna slice it about half a centimeter thickness, like this one. So in Taiwan, we also call pork belly the three-layer meat because you can see it's beautifully three layers, right? And then you, you want to keep the three layers and then each one of them about a centimeter thick, okay? So it's like this. And then there are some parts that the fat is just way more than the meat, then you can just get rid of the fat and keep the meat. And then you want to keep the one that is still very evenly portioned with three layers. I'm done cutting the pork belly and I just peeled my shallots and garlic. We're gonna finally mince it. Okay, this step is important. You don't just put sugar in, you're gonna caramelize your sugar, put hot water in, make this caramel sugar syrup kind of thing. What it does, it gives depth of flavor with like the roasting and caramelized flavor and also it will make your loba shine. When I say shine, it literally shine. The color will be brown and shiny, will be so beautiful. Turn up the heat to medium low. You don't need that much sugar. I just like to make extra and then put it in the fridge so whenever I'm cooking, I can just add a little in and bam, extra flavor. As you can see, they start to form these little crumbs, but we're still far from getting ready, so we're gonna be patient. But with sugar, you always wanna stir around because it gets burned easily. You can see it's starting to caramelize. Now you can see it's mostly melted. You're gonna turn the heat really low and then keep stirring. Be really careful, don't burn your sugar. Once it's completely melted, to be safe, I'll turn the heat off and then I'll add in equal amount of hot water in there. You wanna be really careful because it will splash. Be really careful with the steam. Now it's settling down, I'm gonna turn the heat back on to low. Because after we add the water in, it hardened up the sugar again, so we're gonna melt all the sugar inside. And then we're gonna simmer for about two, three minutes to get it a little thicker. We're ready, turn the heat off. Now all the hard work is done, the rest is the easy part. We're just gonna saute and put everything together and start braising. So first we're gonna turn the heat up and put in some oil. We don't wanna put too much in because eventually the pork belly will give you a lot of fat. So just enough to coat your pot so you can start sauteing your shallots and your garlic. And I'm gonna put it in before the oil gets hot because I don't wanna burn it too fast. I want it to kinda release the flavor before it get golden brown. And then we're gonna put in garlic because garlic burns fast, right? So we're gonna give the shallots a chance first, okay? To shine. We don't need to brown it to golden brown here because remember we also have the fried shallots that we're gonna add in later. Okay, now we're gonna put in the garlic. Now that you see the shallots is transparent and soft and then you can smell the fragrance of the garlic, we can put in our pork. Turn the heat up to high. Now you see most of the meat have changed color. It's time to add in a little bit of our syrup. This will make sure the pork looks shiny and brown. Now we're gonna put in Taiwanese rice wine. Shaoxing rice wine. If you don't have it, just use more Taiwanese rice wine. Some water. Soy sauce. White pepper. Black pepper. Fried shallots. 
Now taste this to see if you want to add more sugar, a little more syrup. Now we're going to put in the bone. Taste it before you cover it. Mmm, perfect. Now we're going to cover it and let it simmer with low heat for about two hours. It's been two hours, the house smells amazing, and we are here to take out the bones and put the eggs in to braise for another hour. Why do we put the bones in? Actually, one time when I was making this loba, and I have some extra bone broth on the side, and I just thought, okay, instead of using water, since I have extra bone broth that I have to use it, and I just pour in the bone broth and use it to make this loba. And I tell you, the end result was amazing. But then every time when I make the loba, I have to make bone broth first. And that is just, you know, extra work, you know? So I just get, you know, smart. So I was like, oh wait, why don't I put a couple of bones in the braise? So while this two hours of cooking, it's braising and it's making the bone broth flavor in there. I know! So smart! And that's why I come up with this. So now, let me show you. After two hours, oh my god! This looks amazing. Look at this color. I hope it comes through through the lens because in real person, it's not just brown. It's kind of like amber, deep brown, and it's shiny. And it's all because the caramelized syrup that we made and we put in. It is beautiful, beautiful. Now we take out the bones, so we have room for our eggs. Oh, you see this fall off? No worries, we want that. Just tear them apart and put them in the sauce. Okay, now we're gonna put in the eggs. Oh gosh, smells so good and it's looking beautiful. Now we're gonna bring it back to boil and then simmer for another hour. The thing about making this dish is that you'll hear your kids asking, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Now it's finally ready. Let's open it up and take a look. Look at that rich braised sauce and the egg and this, oh, it smells so good. We just have to give it a try. Ooh. You gotta have some sauce and some of the pork belly and beautiful eggs. Look at that. Jeez, this is beautiful. I love eggs in case you don't know. I love eggs. The tips for the eggs to look gorgeous, dark brown and shiny is to let it sit overnight, not by hours and hours of cooking, okay? So just one hour of cooking and then let it sit overnight tomorrow have amazing, beautiful looking, delicious egg. Now let's try this. Mm. It sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. Because this is freaking delicious, okay? The taste of the sauce is kind of savory, but it's kind of sweet, but it's not really sweet. And from that shallots, that garlic, and the depth of the bone broth, this whole thing, it's just one word. It's just umami, okay? And the egg, even though it's just one hour of cooking, but you can see that the color is going into the egg white, and the egg is already flavorful. Can you imagine if you wait until tomorrow, this egg is gonna be super delicious. And I know my recipe is not the easiest, but I guarantee you that you will be very happy that you did it. Well, the most common way to use this loba sauce is to pour it over rice, but you can also put it on top of noodles, make a yummy stirred noodle, or any blanched vegetables. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video or this recipe, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the little bell for notifications. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.